Hey, I'm back with a new DAW, but today I want to talk about Jamsticks 4. So this was just released recently and I think the price now is $80. However, the upgrade price is much cheaper. I want to say $40 or $50. And if you bought it before, I guess 2014 or 15, you can upgrade for free. So if you haven't done that and you've purchased Jamsticks before, do that. This new version is really cool, so I thought I'd show it to you and explain what's good about it. So here you have it. Uh, if you aren't familiar with drum jam sticks, what it does is it basically plays drum parts for you. Uh, it, it seems at first like it's similar to something like uh, Easy Drummer or Addictive Drums, but it's actually really different. This one will add fills for you and it basically does all the drum parts for you. So if you're not good at drum programming like me, it will really help you out. So let's get started. I'll show you how it works. If we go into the mixer here, Let's load a drum kit. I already have one loaded here, but you see here there's quite a few different ones. You can purchase extra ones if you want. And you can actually use this with other software like Easy Drummer, Superior Drummer, Addictive Drums, Steven Slate Drums, etc. if you want. But for now, let's just check out these included ones. So I'll use Default Natural. Wait for it to load here. It might take a while to load everything up in my RAM. There we go. So you can kind of hear the sounds there, but let's go farther into it. From there, if we just go into the groove here, you look here, it says no style and no player at the top. Let's go into the style first. I don't know. What should we do? Let's, let's just do basic rock, I guess. Here we go. Rock. Let's see. I can do a preview and go through these. It's not playing for some reason, but that's okay. Let's do rock eighth notes. Oh, it's because I don't have a drummer. Uh, pick a rock drummer. I don't know, maybe John? He seems good. I don't know who this is. But these are all different drummers, and they all have different styles of fills, throw-ins, etc. So you can choose that depending on what you want. Uh, let's see, let me go back here to the different styles. Uh, eighth rock, that's good. Okay, so now, turn the repeats on. You see here, it's just a verse, and it's repeating 30 times, four bars. And every fourth bar, it's going to repeat, because I have this RF, which stands for Repeat Fills, checked. Uh, so let's just listen to it. So it just sounds like a basic... MIDI track. I know that's not special. It has a little fill at the end, which is good, but it can actually do more stuff. So you see here with the kick, if I increase this, it'll add more kicks in there. So if you watch down here at the bottom, like that, and we'll play it so you can hear it. Okay, I should stop hitting play so much. So as you heard there, by increasing that, you can increase the amount of kicks. You can increase the uh, snares also. Uh, the bias changes it from having more in the later parts of the measure to the earlier parts. So you can play with that if you want. Uh, there's lots of other things about like the hi-hat. If you look down here at the bottom of the screen, bottom left of the screen, it will kind of tell you, like creates the hi-hat on the quarter notes creates a hi-hat hi on the eighth between quarter notes. So you can mess with that. The different things like the feel, uh, messes with the timing, etc. And there's other things. You can experiment with these more if you want. I don't want to go over all of them because it'll take too long. But you see auto snare here. This is a really good feature. And this is one of the things they added in the new version. The power. Now if I turn this on, I can move this down and each section can have a different amount of power. So I'll play it and then I'll move the power so you can hear what it does. So it gets softer and it can actually change things. If I turn the auto snare on, when I go below this level, it'll change from a normal snare hit to a hi-hat. One more time.
So there you go. That's a useful feature. And if you're thinking like, ah, it's too quiet when you go down there, just adjust this min and max using your scroll wheel on your mouse, and that will decrease like the actual difference in volume. Because sometimes it is too much. It's a bit too dynamic, if that's possible. And here at the top are some defaults for the style, if you kind of want some presets. If you're not sure what you're doing, usually they're pretty good. Uh, let's see. That's good. And then here, if you go to the accent, these are just specific accents they have um, that will throw in. So it's a little bit more random. It's not the same loop every single time. So symbols, if I put more symbols in, it'll just throw in sim symbols, I guess. I shouldn't say randomly because it's not randomly, but like a drummer would. Uh, same thing here with the ghost snares. This will add some ghost snares to it. I'll let you listen to this. It should sound slightly different. I'm sorry, I have it on silent. I should put it on like funky or something like that, like this. So there you go. And then it fills the same thing. There's all sorts of things you can mess with in here. Uh, so it's really useful. And also, I should say in the accent, now I have it on every bar, but you can do it every second bar, third bar, fourth bar, which is really useful. And I can do this for any type of style here. So I'm using eighth note rock, but other styles also work. Let's see. I'll try with let's see like a jazz style. If I want to do like a jazz swing. I should probably use a different drummer, but whatever. Let's see how this sounds. And now it has different parameters for you to mess with, but let's hear this. So it's really useful for things like that. Of course, it syncs with your tempo, so you can do this slow or fast, etc. You might want to change the drummer for that one, but you know, there's lots of drummers to choose from, so you can choose whatever you like. On top of that, the next thing check out here is this wizard. So you see here it's just a verse, but it's just repeating the same thing over and over again. Why would you want to do that? But you can actually right-click here and in insert a pre-chorus, chorus, etc. This is repeating 30 times. You probably don't want that. But there's a really easy way to build songs. So if I go into here, just clear this here. In song structure, if I just push like I for intro or V for verse or chorus, I can set up whatever song structure I want. So these are all four bars, but you can change the length as much as you want. And here they even have some presets like simple song here. Let's choose style, basic rock. Actually, I'll show you another one. Let's do a special one, Jam Sticks Classic. This allows you to make your own beats freely, more or less. Uh, Jam Sticks, that's fine. Same one. Okay, create song. There we go. Go into the groove here. Now you see here we have different verses, courses, etc. I can go into the power settings, turn everything on, and I'll make my verses a little bit less powerful than my choruses. Go back into the groove settings. Oh no, I'm sorry, edit settings there. Have everything set up. And here you see I have this, and this is going to be on the one and the three. This is going to be on the two and the four. And these down here are the like 16th notes. So this is the first 16th note. This is the second, third, fourth. So if I take this off, you can see it here. Move it here. Moved a 16th note, another 16th note, and another one. And I can even do something like this. If I use my scroll wheel, it becomes darker, which decreases the velocity. Add another one here. So let's listen to this. And so on and so forth. I can do the same thing with the snare. And if I think, Okay, that's good for one bar pattern, but what if I want a two bar pattern? Go in here, and it adds the same thing, so I can do the same thing with a two bar pattern. And it also copies this to verse two and three because these are linked, so it'll be the exact same thing. If I want to unlink them, just double click it, not linked. 
and now I can change verse 3 to whatever I want if I wanted you know some different pattern I can do that uh, let's see anything else here oh also the chorus I believe that during the chorus it'll change to a ride symbol that's controlled by the power hand so here it's minimum power so anything above this will start using the ride symbol instead of the hi-hat whereas here it should be higher I believe someplace uh, ride symbol yeah it's all the way up there we go that's one thing the menus at first take a little bit of getting used to it's kind of annoying like where is everything but this is a really fast and easy way to get tracks up and running but let me let you hear one I'll let you listen to the transition between the verse and the chorus so you can see how different it sounds So oh, there you go. You heard during the chorus it got slightly louder and it started using the ride symbol instead of just the hi-hats. And I could adjust that. I could make that more pronounced if I wanted to, but why? So I guess you understand how this works so far. I'll show you one more thing here. If we want to use a different drum set, you think, oh, I don't like these drums. You can actually go here to the mixer and instead of using the rock default, go into special kits here. MIDI out template, load, and let's use Addictive Drums 2. I actually had that one. There's different ones here depending on which drum kit you use, but I think I'll use like the Fairfax kit. So let's use Basic Tom here, load it up. Okay, now there's no sound coming out because I need Addictive Drums. So let's load Addictive Drums here. Okay, so now I have the kit loaded up in Addictive Drums. This is just one of the Fairfax kits. But if I go here, it's triggering Addictive drum Drums too. And so now I can go through here and just play this, and it should trigger all my drums for me. So as you heard, there's all sorts of different kits and addictive drums, and you can do the same thing with any other drum software. They have lots of different uh, drum maps for those, so that's another thing. And one other thing I guess I should go over here is there's even a way to import your own MIDI styles. Uh, where is it? Import here. So if I do this, load style, it says MIDI groove. So I just click this, open it, and I can use one of the... Uh, addictive drums MIDI files here. Let's see. This one I guess is okay. I don't know. Let's try here. So now it's using this. So let's listen to this. That in no way fitted with the song, but it's okay. Fitted even a word? Fit with song, I don't know. I've obviously been talking too long because <laughs> I've forgotten English. But I hope this gives you an idea of how Jam 6.4 works. It's really cool software that really helps you if you're like me and you don't know how to program drums. 
for electronic drums, I'd probably use something else because I like to, you know, really get in there with the different drum patterns. But for acoustic drums, rock, jazz, blues, heavy metal, fusion, etc., this is a lifesaver. It saves you lots of time and it sounds much more natural than what I could do. So, hope this helped you out. Uh, leave me any questions or comments down below. Thank you very much and until next time, see you.